In this lesson, you're going to learn how to solve right triangles. So what does that mean to solve a right triangle? Well, it means that you want to find out what all the angle measures are and what all the side lengths are. So there's actually six pieces of information, the three angles and the three sides, but we're only given limited amounts of information here. So we're going to go through two examples. And the first example, we're given 20 and side six. So the first thing I'd probably do here is solve for this missing angle here, B. And we know that these two angles here, these acute angles are going to be complementary. They add up to 90 degrees. So if this is 20, we automatically know that angle B is 70. So that was pretty easy. But now let's say, how do we find out the side across from angle B, which is side B, and the side across from angle C, which is side C? Well, that's where we're going to use our SOCATOA or our trigonometric uh, ratios. So let's see, if we're using angle 20, this side 6, which is the opposite side, and the one across from the right angle, which is the hypotenuse, which trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent, ties together opposite and hypotenuse? Well, you can see opposite hypotenuse, that's S, that's sine. So we've got the sine of 20 degrees equals opposite 6 over hypotenuse C. Then what we can do is we can think of this as being divided by 1. Anything divided by 1 is itself. And we could cross multiply to get rid of the fraction. So we have C times sine of 20 equals 6 times 1, which is 6. Then if we divide both sides by the sine of 20, that'll give us C by itself. So let's go to the calculator on that one. We have 6 divided by the sine of 20. Make sure you're in degree mode since the angle is in degrees. So that comes out to about 17.5. So let's write that down. That was angle C, 17.5. Now, if we want to solve for side B, I like to go back to the original numbers just because this is rounded here. So we've got, let's see, opposite and adjacent. Which one's opposite and adjacent? That looks like that's TOA. That's tangent, the tangent ratio. So we have the tangent of 20 degrees equals 6 over side B. Then what we can do is we can think of this as being divided by 1. We can do the cross multiplying to get rid of the fraction. So that's b times the tangent of 20 equals 6 times 1, which is 6. And if we divide both sides by the tangent of 20, we get b by itself. So let's go to the calculator. 6 divided by tangent of 20. That comes out to 16.5. And now we've solved the triangle. We found all the sides. We found all the angles. And you've got it. Let's do one more example so you can get some practice with this. Okay, number two, a little bit more challenging problem. And if some of this seems like a little bit too tough for you, go back to my trigonometry basics video and that'll help you to kind of understand how to work with the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios a little bit better. But for number two, we're given the side lengths, but we're not given any of the acute angle measures. So how should we approach this? Well, let's go ahead and solve for this missing side here first. And because we're given two sides in a right triangle, we want to find that third side. Here's where the famous Pythagorean theorem comes into uh, to play. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So this is like our hypotenuse. That's our C side in the Pythagorean theorem. This is like your A and your B. So let's just call this a side E here since it's across from a, uh, angle E. So we have E squared plus 5 squared equals 8 squared. Okay. E squared plus 5 squared is 5 times 5, 25. 8 squared is 8 times 8, 64. If we subtract 25 from both sides of the equation, we get 39. And if we take the square root to get that E by itself, we just get an exact answer here of square root of 39. Okay, so now we found all the sides. Now we just have to find these two acute angles. Of course, if we find one, we could just subtract from 90 to find the other one. Let's go ahead and solve for angle D right here. So let's use, again, the original values. See, if I made a mistake here and then I went to use this side, I would then carry that mistake forward. That's why I like to go back to the original problems. The other thing is if I rounded this, like if I did this on my calculator, got a rounded answer, and I used that rounded answer, and then I did the next step and I rounded again, we get what we call as a, a rounding uh, error, basically. You keep rounding, rounding. It's going to be a little bit off, a little bit more off, a little bit more off, like that. So let's position ourselves over here at angle D. We've got the opposite side, we've got the hypotenuse. Which trig function tell, uh, ties together opposite and hypotenuse? You can see that's so or sine. So we have the sine of angle D equals opposite, which is 5, over hypotenuse, which is 8. Now, whenever we want to solve for the missing angle, that's when the inverse trig functions come into play. In this case, the sine inverse, because the sine and sine inverse, those undo one another. 
And let's see what that comes out to on the calculator. We've got sine inverse of 5 eighths, which is 38.7 approximately degrees. So that's this guy right here. And then if we want to solve for angle E, these two angles add up to 90. So if I just do 90 minus 38.7, that's 51.3. And you solve the triangle, all the angles, all the sides. If you want to see what happens when you don't have a right triangle, right? We've been working with right triangle trigonometry. That's when you want to use the law of sines and the law of cosines. And I talk about that in that video right there. So follow me over there and we'll dive into those concepts.